guys have this myth of when you sexually when you interact sexually with a person with a disability they are sweet uh, you can cure some diseases and all that those are myths so i think most of the guys that come in, came into my life they were just after sex because they don't want to be seen with you outside there they just want sex and then they are gone i started dating in uh, 2014 yes that's when i had my first boyfriend and uh we dated for i think i was i was too clingy we dated for three years and then he dumped me and i cried a lot i remember crying because he's the first person who assured me that i can i can be loved then he dumped me late 2016 i got into a serious relationship let's say the others were not the first one was not serious and we dated for some time and then unfortunately he passed on he passed in passed on in 2017 he got a he got an accident and passed on and uh, i really cried because i've gotten a person who loves me for real he has showed commitment and all that because we were in the early stages of marriage we had gone for the dowry for the introduction and then they were planning to come for the dowry and then he he got into an accident and died so i was very devastated but now so i've stayed for a very long time without dating i started dating last year uh jacqueline i'm with uh, my girlfriend for one year seven months now uh tangu tujuane na yeye amenibadilisha katika maisha yangu kuna mambo yenye siko najua kufanya sasa hii nafanya na pia ameweza kutouch wao za watoto wengine huku shule na hata nje pia ameweza kusaidia watoto ambao hawajiwezi katika kama ambao wako na disabilities na pia ameweza kufanya mambo ambayo si wengi wetu wanaweza fanya kama kama vile alivyo yeye na hiyo disability limit chaki tukio nilikuwa nafanya kazi pale Madukes alikuwa amekuja kununua viatu wakati alikamu kununua roho yangu ikanivutia ika, ika kwake so alikamu several times akubai tu viatu hivyo hivyo alafu after that tukaenda for a date hapo ndo aliweza kuniambia maisha yake venye iko na mimi pia nikamwambia yangu na pia kaweza kupenda hata watu wengi wanashinda huko tunakaa na yeye aje kwa nyumba wengi wao wanasema disability hiyo disability yako nayo ataezi fanya kazi mzito haizi fanya yani kitu kuwe perfect but as for me i know anaweza cuz tumekaa na yeye kwa nyumba na anaweza kwa maana ya kwanza wakati nilimpeleka nyumbani wazazi wangu wako mkubali yani walikuwa na hiyo ngumu ya kumkubali vile alivyo lakini tukienda mara ya pili walimkubali kwa sababu waliona hawezi mfukuza kwa sababu ati jinsi alivyo naona yenye kenye kiko ndani yake it's more important kuliko venye anakaa physically so far our plans ni kuempower hao watoto wenye wako na disability you know like for now we have kuna forum ya create ya ya Save Havens community ambayo inaandago watoto wenye wako na disability anawasaidia like kuwapea pampas and uh, walking stick you know which kama hizo disability is not an ability ya wakati unapenda mtu unapenda vile alivyo na wakati utamuonyesha mapenzi ambayo ni ukweli ataona hiyo disability yako nayo ataona ako normal kama mimi so it is good to appreciate them the way they are na kuwa, na kuwapitia nguvu na kuonyesha that they are unique to other people during the Mandela Washington program we were supposed to come up with a TED, TED talk so i came up with a TED talk that's where my journey started i think i came up with a TED talk on uh, inclusion of women with, with, with disabilities in accessing sexual and reproductive health rights you find that so many women and young girls with disabilities don't have access to this reproductive health rights and services that the other abled women have so uh, i joined an organization called decent decent conversations whereby we have talks it's led by one tabitha 
we have talks of sexual reproductive and death rights, and I think I'm the only one with a disability there. So in decent talks, in decent conversation, I'm able to air out some of the challenges we as young women and girls with disabilities face when trying to access these sexual reproductive and health rights services. And we face a lot. We face a lot because when a, when a young woman with a disability is sexually violated, they don't get a chance to, they don't get a doorway to go and report because uh, some of these things are not out there. They don't know they have those rights to go out there and report these cases of abuses that happen to them. And also, young girls with disabilities are sexually uh, raped and uh, all that. In I have a, I have a neighbor at my home. She's uh, severely, severely disabled. So what happens, they leave her in the compound and they go out to, to look for food. So one day when she was there, somebody came and raped her. When she was raped, they never knew because she never told them. Oh, she, was, she's, she doesn't even talk. So they ne nobody knew what had happened to her until now they started seeing some signs she was pregnant. And then she came, yeah, she gave birth, but now that case was not reported. Late 2019, but population Revenue, uh, Population Reference Bureau of the United States of America were looking for champions of sexual reproductive and, and death rights with disabilities, and I applied, and I got it. And uh, there was the ICPD event that was happening in uh, Continental and uh, Continental Hotel and KCC Center. So I got that chance, and I went there and I talked for three minutes about sexually reproductive and death rates that, and the challenges that women with disabilities go through. Educate people on sexual reproductive and rights, and also uh, on these women with disabilities, they should know who they have rights. And uh, people with, without disabilities should know that people with disabilities have the same emotions and feelings that they experience. We are just like the normal people. That is the first thing we should get. And uh, the fear of reporting. People don't, when we are uh, sexually violated, you don't go out there and report. Gender-based violence is there. People are getting killed uh, or beaten out there and they don't report. People should report and also they should know their rights. For me, if I could have blended in, like I could have tried to fit in the society, I could not be where I am. So they should not blend in, they should stand out. Let them do something that is extraordinary uh, so that people could just wonder, hey, they have, uh, she can do that. Let them stand out, let them not blend in, and let them not be comfortable where they are. There are so many uh, opportunities out there for people with disabilities. So they should go out there and keep on, keep on, keep on fighting. So inclusive education is very good. And because uh, as a learner with a disability, you tend to develop self-esteem and you also tend to want to do what the other learners are doing. Uh, like, like, like the learners we have in here, when they see others playing out there, they also want to do that. So with time, they become independent. They can maybe try to work on their own, do anything on their own. So inclusive education, I think, is the best way to go. Because uh, when you are segregated and you have your own school out there, there are some things in the society you are going to miss out. Your social life is not going to be there. So you're not going to have, a, uh, you're not going to have, there is no an impact in your life when it comes to when you are segregated compared to inclusive education. I think what the government should do is should, they should make sure that all schools are disability friendly. They should have the rams, uh, disability toilets, so that these kids, when they are here, they feel comfortable and the teachers, because I'm the only teacher here with a disability and uh, walking up and down here, it's not, it's not easy.